Hi guys and welcome to another video on Amazonia YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be continuing with the DSP series. So I'll be covering how to create an audience inside Amazon DSP. Now for this occasion, I'll be creating an audience of users who viewed specific set of ASINs of our competitors and then build an audience off of them. Additionally, after that, we can also go one step further and create a lookalike. But let's stick to the topic. Now, once inside the Amazon DSP console on the left, as usual, you will see your orders, line items, creatives, and there's also the audience sections. Once you click there, you will be presented with this one. You can go and browse everything that's available here because it will give you an insight on what's possible and what's not. For example, the, the very basic is demographic audience where you can, for example, limit uh, your audience by the age. And you do this uh, during the creation of a light item as we did in our previous video when we created a line item for desktop. So if you create an audience and also you add these demographics there, for example, if you know that your audience is typically aged uh, 55 to 64, when you add this audience, um, you will only target those people. So we'll, you will not spend your precious advertising spend on people who are maybe 20 years old or 25 to 34. If you, it's just an imaginary scenario, but still, if that's the case, then you can narrow it down uh, to your target demographics. Same goes for the gender, same goes for the home own ownership, which is pretty good. What? No, it's found. It used to be. Um, maybe it's, it's for this specific account, but typically uh, you can have also that as a breakdown, like home own ownership. Then this, there's the, the household that you can see, like customers in households with children, it's kind of freaky how Amazon knows that knows this, but they do it most probably because of the buying behaviors. Like if you are a parent and you keep buying like uh, clothes for a one year olds and clothes for <laughs> next year, clothes for two year olds and so on. So they can quickly put you in a bucket and then you land as a demographic. There is the income. I'm not going to go through all of them, but just show you that some of, uh, some of the uh, audience is pre-built that you can use. Then you can also add different browsers, different devices in market audience. So you can really go crazy for this, for this specific use case scenario, we're going to target the users who saw products of our competitors, but didn't buy, we'll go to click a new audience and here you will be presented with the next screen. These are all the options that you can use to create an audience. The one that we will use is going to be products. So shoppers who engage with products on Amazon. There are different kinds of uh, options here. You can upload your lists, uh, email lists. Uh, this will be like hashed audience data because Amazon will hash everything and hide the information about the specific users, but anonymize the what you upload. Then there's the off Amazon conversions. If you use some kind of um, tag, external tag, then you can add that as well. Website traffic from Amazon ads tag, et cetera, et cetera. So you can, it's kind of visible, clear from, from what's written over here. So let's go to the product section right now. Here's where the, the magic is going to happen. Okay. So now I already have a list, of some of the ASINs that I found using Helium 10 black box and selected the number of, of them that I want to use. Okay. Copy and enter lists like here and add them bunch of household cameras here. So now that we added 19 of them for the start, um, you can go up to thousand here. And this goes for the every custom audience that you create. You have an option to create these five different audience behaviors. So um, as you can see for product views over here, similar product use, product searches, product purchases, and so subscribe and save. 
Product views consist of audiences that viewed any detail page of the selected products. Product purchase consists of audiences that purchased any of the selected products, obviously. Similar product views that like really more, more broad audience based on what you uh, input over here as an, as an ASIN list consists of audiences that viewed any detail page of products that are similar to the selected products. It's kind of already you get a lookalike audience when you create this one. And product searches consists of audiences that searched for keywords related to the selected products. This one is really, really broad. So I do create it, but I've never seen great success with it. Maybe it's about me, but still. And subscribers say the last one consists of audiences that have active subscriptions of any of the selected products. So it's with this subscribe and save audience, you can target the, your competitors, uh, previous buyers who already have active subscribe and save subscription uh, on them. So to take the, the buyers from them. Um, similar as you, as with everything else, we need to have an audience name that clearly defines what you can, you, what, what you have here, which you will see later on in your audience list, try to be as specific as possible, because as you build up many different audiences, you will have difficulties finding the right one in the dropdown list. Also, it's uh, recommended that you add a description, but for this occasion, I'm going to skip that, but make sure to add that. Okay. Product purchase, because these are the competitors, I'm going to use something like, um, let's say every, yeah, every audience will have this addition, like something, something dash product purchases, something, something dash product views, and then. Uh, here you define the look back period, um, because look back period cannot be seen later on in the audiences. I always add look back period in the audience name. So let's do something like competitors, uh, for the look back, let's go and use, yeah, let's use 30 days dash 30 days. This is usually how I do it. There are different look back periods here. Um, some of them are longer than the others. Well, some of them can be up to a year, but most of them are up to 90 days. If I'm not mistaken, you can build the product purchases, uh, look back up to 365 days. And for the rest of the three, you can use up to 90 days. So for competitors here, because this is kind of a product where when somebody already bought it, there are really minimal chances that they will again buy our product in the next 30 days. But nevertheless, I'm going to create this list just because I want to have it because maybe we, we can use it as exclusion list. So exclude those who already bought, for example. Uh, so let's, uh, Check, uh, take that, that one as, as, uh, as because we want to create it. And then let's move to the product views. So competitor 30 days. Yeah. Let's do also views here, sales, just for the sake that we are safe that we're going to have that as a, as an audience name, because it's going to be easier for us also to browse and search through the audience lists later on. Similar product use, let's do that as a lookalike competitors, 30 days, same, same thing as before. I'm going to call it lookalike. Let's do product searches and let's do the last one. Subscribe and save. Why not? Maybe we can win some of these. Now that would be all. Now, when you click save, what you will be presented with, uh, that it's going to take some time for the audience to be created. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes, depending on the, on the audience. Uh, this is actually a prerequisite that you can now go ahead into the line item that we created and add this audience, some of these audiences over there. I'm going to do that, uh, when we start to build a line item for mobile devices. Uh, so stay tuned. Let me know if this wasn't clear, but it's pretty straightforward process. You select your uh, 
audience type or from, or from the product interactions, and then you paste your async list and you build out an audience. Let me know if you have any further questions in the comment section, and I'll be glad to answer them all. Stay tuned for the next videos on DSP. Bye-bye, guys.